Another old story I found that came in last year. Nurses on deck. <laughs> I haven't posted on a forum before. I just found this site a few days ago and read that many of us are going through the same thing. I haven't told anyone else, not even my friends or family. I don't feel comfortable telling my family. My mom and my wife are really close. We don't have kids and she's had issues with her ovaries ever since she was young, so we couldn't have kids. We thought about adoption, but put that on hold for now. But I recently found out that my wife of 15 years is cheating on me. She had a high school reunion a few weeks ago and noticed she started talking about some guy she used to date back when she attended college. This is also a subtle red flag most men miss. I know speaking from experience. Apparently they attended nursing school together and briefly had a thing. Well, that is what she told me. She said their relationship ended badly and that was the end of the conversation. Man, I swear, I didn't know nurses were this bad. But further research showed he also had a very successful sporting goods store. Maybe she was drawn to the money. Well, anyway, things started to get a little suspicious when she suddenly started leaving the house without telling me anything. She would take a phone call and leave. Her response was super vague when she got back. I would ask her, hey, where did you go? She would say, I had to take care of something at work. Now, the whole time we have been married, she has never returned to work for anything, even if it was somewhat important. We live in Minnesota, so I thought about putting a GPS tracker on her vehicle. But here in Minnesota, GPS trackers are illegal without the person's consent. Fast forward two weeks and she does it again, leaving the house in her scrubs. But this time she leaves for four hours. She usually gets home around 6.30ish or so, but this time she doesn't get home until almost 11 p.m. I confronted her about it and we got into a heated argument. She told me I was not her dad and she had to go back to work. So I interrupted her and said, all of a sudden you are messing up at work. I just shook my head and walked away. <laughs> so my theory was that this all started happening after her high school reunion like right away. That was all that was needed for me. The next morning, she went to work without saying anything to me. So I went to work. I work for the city of Minneapolis. On my lunch break, I did some initial research about voice activated recorders. I couldn't use a tracker, so I decided to see if I could get anything on the conversations she was having with anyone. So for the next week, we slept in separate rooms. It was like we were strangers. I left my bedroom door open when I went to bed, maybe hoping she would want to come and talk, but she didn't. But she closed her door and locked it. That was a huge signal for me. So I did more research on these voice recorders and actually found a mini voice activated recorder for $75. It took me almost a week before I had the opportunity to insert this mini voice activated recorder in her car. For the first two weeks, she didn't say anything incriminating, nothing. All she talked about was work and hanging out with her girlfriends every so often. Fast forward another two weeks, and one night she told me she was going to go out with some of her girlfriends and a few ladies from work. Now keep in mind, we are still sleeping in separate rooms. That night, my wife didn't get home until almost three in the morning, and she was a little tipsy, and she slept in the bed with me because she couldn't make it to her room. <laughs> I waited until she fell asleep went out to her car to retrieve the recorder and listen to it. The only thing that concerned me was, she said to one of her girlfriends, she had some exciting plans the following weekend. I put that in my notes on my cell phone calendar. There was nothing else on the recorder. So it's been a month since we were intimate and nothing has changed. She stopped telling me she loved me and she stopped texting me throughout the day when we were both working. So. Fast forward to Friday night, she's off that day, and when I get home, she's already gone for the night. But this time, she doesn't come back home. That's when I knew she was cheating on me with someone. I just didn't know who yet. This woman left sometime Friday and didn't get home until Sunday night. She was gone the whole weekend without calling or texting me. I was proud of myself. I didn't say anything. As far as I was concerned, this marriage was over and I wasn't going to get in her face or yell or do any of that shit. Over the next few days, 
I did some initial research on divorce laws here in Minnesota and found out that we are in a no-fault divorce state, which was okay in my book. We don't have any kids. The only thing that was an issue was the house. Well, as luck would have it, my wife came home early one day from work. I got off at five and it only took me about 20 minutes to get home. She said she wasn't feeling well and went to lie down. I waited about 30 minutes before I went out to her car and retrieved a voice activated recorder. I went back into my bedroom and listened to what was said that entire weekend. That's when I found out she was cheating on me with the guy she dated way back when. This is the same guy she has been talking about from the high school reunion. The worst part is they started talking even before the high school reunion and they even hooked up when he came to visit his parents who live here in Minneapolis. So after doing some serious digging, I found out who the guy was. I went through phone records, got his number and found his Facebook profile. But that's where my initial research ended. But I did find out he was married. I kept searching. I couldn't find out where he lived on my own. So I hired a private investigator to find out where he lived. I gave him his name and told him all I wanted was his address. When I looked up his sporting goods store, it had some lawyer's name or maybe I was doing it wrong, but it didn't have his personal address. I gave the private investigator three days just to try and keep my costs down. Well, it didn't take him three days. It only took him two days. When I had that information, I went to see a lawyer and filed the divorce papers on the basis of irreconcilable differences. Remember, I haven't said one word to my wife. She doesn't know anything. Best to keep it that way. Fast forward a couple of days and my wife has to take an overnight shift for someone at the last minute. At about 7.53 p.m., I got a knock at the door. It's my mother-in-law. She said we needed to talk. And the first thing she told me was not to tell her daughter, my wife, that she came by. Now I am totally blown away. She began to tell me that my wife was cheating on me. I simply smiled at her and told her I already knew. She started crying and begged me to try and forgive her. I simply told her I couldn't. I asked my mother-in-law how she found out, and she told me she caught them kissing by accident on her back patio. And she went off on my wife and told the guy to leave. It's the same guy from the high school reunion. Kudos to his mother-in-law. Well, my wife told my mother-in-law that she wasn't sure she loved me anymore. You know, all I did was love that woman and support her. My mother-in-law left a few minutes later. The next morning, as my wife was coming in the door, I was leaving. I didn't say anything to her and she was surprised at my demeanor because she stood in a doorway and just stared at me while I got in my car. That night, when I got home, my wife actually tried to sleep with me. I told her I wasn't in the mood, I couldn't, and would not touch her. So, about a month later, while she was at work, she was served with divorce papers, and to my surprise, she didn't say anything. While we were waiting for the divorce hearing, I typed up a little note along with a copy of the audio files and sent it to this guy's wife. Well, it didn't turn out well for my soon-to-be ex-wife. Apparently, he blamed her for messing up his marriage. I guess the audio files and the note has something to do with it. <laughs> when he dumped her, she tried everything she could to come back to me. I put the brakes on that. When the divorce hearing rolled around, we both kept what we wanted. When the house sells, we will split the equity. My ex-wife told me she will move out and back with her mom. That's going to be fun. <laughs> anyway, that's my story for now. I may come back with an update in reference to my ex-wife's AP. In my opinion, I don't really have anything negative to say. I applaud him for keeping his wits about him. He didn't give in to her physical temptation and his mother-in-law telling on her daughter was a complete surprise to me. I didn't think his mother-in-law would snitch on her daughter, but that just shows you that she thought highly of him. And I haven't received any other updates from this story. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.